Let's look at another problem, and in this case, we are inverse Laplace transforming the expression capital F of S. It's not only improper as a transfer function, but we also, if you can see, maybe it's not obvious, but this denominator polynomial actually has complex roots. And to get started, let's just let the calculator do the brute force work for us and identify what those roots are so that we now have a better feel for what's going on. If we just look at the denominator as a polynomial, we can actually use the function in our calculator C zeros for complex zeros. And what I'm going to do then is turn on the calculator, get into the home screen, I'll clear that last command line and let me go into the catalog of functions. I will hit the C button and now I'm on ceiling but what I want to do is go down to complex zero so let me go down a few commands or screens and I've now found com the function complex zeros. I will hit enter to pull that into my command line, I now will input the denominator polynomial. Instead of s, I will use x. So I now have x squared plus 48x plus 625. And in this complex zero command, it's finding the zeros of, a fun of a, an expression, a polynomial in x. And so I have to say my polynomial is a function of s. Following that polynomial then with a comma x, I'll close the parenthesis, and now I can hit enter. And my denominator polynomial actually has roots at minus 24 plus and minus j7. And now we know that our answer is going to look like e to the minus 24t with a cosine at a frequency of 7 for the damped frequency. And then what we don't know yet is this particular angle. And we'll identify that after we get the partial fraction expansion coefficients. But before we can do that, we actually need to convert this capital F of S to where we have a proper piece identified. And we can then go with our calculator and do this proper fraction operation. And let's then do that. We now, let's clear the command line. I will go in and go down to the P and go up one. Now there's my proper fraction. What I will do is I will input the numerator polynomial, 10x squared plus 512x plus 7186 and divide that by the denominator, which is x squared plus 48x plus 625, and close that proper fraction, hit enter, and now I have my f of s as 10 plus the expression 8 times 4s plus 117 all over s squared plus 48s plus 625. If you were looking at the previous video, you might have seen that I used the factor operation on this proper f factor form, or pro proper fraction form. That actually now has complex roots, so I can't just use the factor. I actually has, have to use the complex factor, or the C factor, function in the calculator. Let me do that. I'll clear that input line. I will go up and grab the total expression, capital F of S, and hit the Enter key. I need to get rid of that 10 piece. Let me now go to the far left by the second left arrow and find I have the complex factor somewhere hiding by the C's. Let me go down. and get it in a roundabout way. I will now find or go back and grab that expression 
I now have the complex factor expression in the calculator and what I need to do is I now have a, I want to fit it to K1 over S plus 24 minus J7 plus a K1 star over S plus 24 plus J7. What the calculator is showing me is that it has 8 over 4S plus 117 all over this S minus, and then it has a minus 24 plus J7 piece, and then it has an S plus 24 plus J7. What I'm going to do in the calculator is actually effectively multiply through by this particular factor and to do that I'm really going to just go in and cut that out and then I'm going to evaluate this resulting expression at the value s equal to minus 24 plus j7. Let's see if I can do that. So I'm going to clear this input command line. I'm going to go up and grab the result and enter that and now what I want to do is I actually want to scroll over and cut out this piece that is at S plus 24 minus J7. And to do that I'm going to lock on my highlighter so there's the up arrow key and scrolling over with the left mouse or left cursor I should say and now I want to cut that out so it's going to be the green diamond second and now I've cut that out and if I scroll back across. If I haven't eliminated all of the parentheses, maybe what I should do is eliminate that last parenthesis. I will now go to the far right with the second right arrow and what I want to do is now evaluate that expression when x is equal to minus 24 plus j7. So that's this vertical bar, that's the width, and now I will say x equal to minus 24 plus i7 and hit enter. And that now tells me that k1 as a coefficient is equal to 16 minus 12i. And I can actually find that in polar form if I want to. Let me clear the input command line. I will now grab that result go into the catalog of commands and find my polar which is basically at the bottom of that first screen and now I'll do a green diamond enter to obtain that this is now 20 in magnitude at an angle of minus 36.87 degrees. That now allows me to say that I have the following expression. I now have capital F of S equaling what I factor down initially 10 plus these other two pieces. I have 20 at an angle of minus 36.87 degrees over S plus 24 minus J7 plus a, its conjugate 20 plus 36.87 degrees over S plus 24 plus J7. I can now write down the time domain expression for little f of t. That's 10 times the impulse or an impulse weight with a weight of 10. And now I need to simply double this magnitude. So I now have plus 40. The e is going to be e to the minus 24 cosine, the damped frequency is 7, and my angle is then minus 36.87 degrees, and that expression is true for t greater than or equal to 0. And hopefully that now shows you how quickly you can use the calculator to do some of these complex algebra manipulations.